Hey, Bolt Lovers, we're on a 62 foot Hatteras 2006. We're going to be replacing the port and starboard shore power cables because of the age of the vessel and the age of the cables. Follow us while we do this. original shore power cable with the Hatteras. As you can see, it's just wear and it's gritty and stuff like that. It feels like sandpaper in my hands. It's not smooth. So we're gonna be replacing this one. And then on the port side, we're gonna be replacing the cable, which is in better condition than the starboard, but it still needs to be replaced. On the port side, we also have a damaged relay. So I'm over here on the port side shore power cable system and the relay needs to be replaced as you can see there's a whole bunch of oxidation on it which is not ideal and there's some rollers that need to be replaced in here as you can see everything inside the actual tube in which the cable goes in is all spaghetti which is not it's literally not ideal and for those people with OCD I'm sorry look at that all right guys so what we end up doing is removing the shore power cable from the circuit breaker over here now we have it loose and we have our end right there we're going to utilize this unit to help us take the cable out the old cable out and help us bring in the new cable but before we do that we have to take our out limit switch off so that i could get access to some clamps down there and also the cable stop which is that white nylon contraption right down there that is our cable stop from going out so once we're able to get this loose i can get into the bucket take those two pieces off then we're going to use this to help us bring in and out the old and the new cable all right guys look i got the out limit switch taken off the clamp that holds this cable inside the bucket removed and now we're going to end up removing this out limit switch cable stop this is this utilizes a allen wrench which drooling over there is looking for my tools so we could do this this is a one piece unit there are two piece units in the field so that you don't have to remove the cable in order to put this on but since this is an old unit we have to take the whole cable off and slide this whole thing all the way to the end so i'm gonna be pressing this out button Oh. All right, go ahead and activate it. Oh, well, my dad just screamed at me to activate it. So I'm gonna press the out button and then look how satisfying it comes out. Oh, wait. That was not supposed to happen. Oh, okay. I'm recording at the same time. Okay, so after some technical difficulties now, I should be able to press the button and it comes out like that. Look at that. Pretty awesome. Ta-da. It's all out. All right, guys, after removing the cable, you can see that all the rollers, the relay and the installation is in very good shape for the age. What we're gonna end up doing is putting the new cable in and adjusting the tension with this pulley here by either adding or subtracting these shims. So in order to do that, you have to pull this front plate off. And if you look inside there, there are shims. That's what keeps the plate either squeezed or open. It all depends on the size of the cable. So we're gonna determine that that is the correct size for the new cable going in. All right, this is our starboard shore power cable, which is already connected to the pedestal. And the port one, the one that Julian pulled out, is a new harness that has a molded end from the factory. See, look how nice and pretty that molded end. Julian, show them how nice that molded end is. Yeah, it's molded, so it's not an actual plug that is cut and spliced. It's actually a molded end. 
So we're gonna take the other end and now we're gonna push it through the, the, the guide assembly and use the CM7 to bring it back into. All right, so we're gonna do this in a reverse pattern now. So now Julian's gonna use the end of the cable and he's gonna put it through the hole. You gotta tease it first and then you put it. What did he say? Hey. Oh. So he's gonna push it through the hole. I'm gonna get it on the other side and we're gonna align it with the rollers. So don't push it anymore because it's not gonna go in. That's what she said. <laughs> All right, so now you can see that we have the cable here already. Julian's pushing it little by little. Now he's gonna feed it in. Okay, easy. Easy, hold it. All right, so now that, so now that we have the cable here, we had to use a tie wrap. So we're gonna put it underneath this roller and then we're gonna use, turn on the system on the in function so that we could pull the cable in now using the CM7. Now that we have the cable through all the guides and through the main roller, we have to make sure that we put the cable stop on here first. It has to be oriented in the right direction in order for that switch, the out limit switch to work. There's been a lot of times that I've seen people install this without putting the out limit switch stop. And then they have to take the whole thing apart in order to put that thing back together. So make sure you put the out limit switch stop on here first by sliding it on the end of the cable and coming up to the proper length that you need. All right, now that I have my cable stop installed or slid on, you can actually see that it actually goes into these rollers and what it does is it expands it. And when it expands it, it opens up these two switches on the other side. So if one switch gets activated, it still works until both sides get activated. So this slides in between both of them like that and then that's what stops the cable from going out. So make sure that this is in the right direction. All right, you could see that I have my nice 85 foot cable inside this bucket. I like to teach the cable to come in in the order that it is actually supposed to spiral. So in this particular application, the way the cable is coming in and going into the bucket from down here, Okay, I have to turn the cable clockwise on the outside coming into the hose pipe. So while Julian was pushing the button, the momentary button, I was outside turning the cable clockwise so the cable could spiral here. Nice. We're teaching the cable how to come in. Now, sometimes if you have a big bucket, it really doesn't matter. But what we're trying to do is trying to prevent these cables from turning into a knot, a physical nightmare. Once it becomes a knot, then you have to take everything apart and put it all back in. All right, guys, we're back on board again, and we're gonna be dealing with the port side short power cable. Uh, we got our new CM7 unit there, and we got our relay, let me find my finger, right over there. So that's gonna be replacing the electronic relay box on that and we're gonna be replacing this unit here. As you know, that this one was completely worn out, stripped threads and broken teeth inside. So we're gonna install this one on that and make it look like that one. We got our new six string connected to the main breaker, comes down, it's all taken care of, secured in the best fashion. We got our new CM7 and we have our roller guides. I've uh, replaced the relay, I adjusted the, the shims and we've tested it in and out. As you can see we have the whole unit inside the bucket 85 feet and there's the port side. All right guys this is a wrap on this short power update on this 2006 Hatteras. Yes it's raining right now and guys like and subscribe.